it was probably a good month before I realized that it wasn't getting better, that I wasn't myself. I was there physically for my kids, but not mentally there for my kids. It didn't hit me until years later. And as I look back in retrospect, I realize I'm like, wow, that's probably why I acted this way, or that's why you know I pushed this person away or that person away. I've been hospitalized three times um, for you know, suicidal thoughts and attempts and things like that. I would like freak out, have anxiety attacks, and I'll have an anxiety attack. One time it was to the point where I had to go to the hospital, to a psych ward. I stopped doing things that I enjoy, walking with my friends, hanging out with my friends, talking to my friends. I felt like a loner. There are so many demands for women at work, at home. You're a wife, you're a mom, you're a friend, you're a coworker, uh, you're an employee. Trying to be everything for everyone, I realize that I have to take a, te a step back and take care of myself. So my brother was murdered in 2004 and you would think right after that, that I would have, you know, seek the help and stuff like that. Prior to my brother, I lost my, my grandma and my grandpa. So it's within a, a span of 18 months that I lost all three of them. I didn't deal with that trauma, that, that amount of grief within a span of, you know, such a short span of time. I grew up being bullied um, in school and I wasn't, I, yeah, I, I didn't receive the emotional support that I would have liked to from my family. It just led to a lot of like bottling things in and internalizing, you know, the mean things that people would say to me at school, mean things that sometimes my parents would say to me at home. But I knew in eighth grade because that was the first time I put a knife to my wrist. I didn't like cut myself, but I was like, you know, for me to take it to that extent at such a young age, I knew something wasn't right. In my freshman year of high school, I wasn't used to a large group of people around me, so I was a little intimidated and I was kind of anxious going into that school because I, I graduated from a class of only 15 people in middle school. I would talk to my guidance counselor a lot during my freshman year. And I, I told him one time I had a lot of chest pains and he said that those are just palpitations which, which come with anxiety. So I was in the hospital in this mountain Mount Sinai, this psychiatric unit. And I stayed there for a week. It's somewhere between 2007 and 2009. I had went home for Christmas. And I had gotten to a, and I, I won't forget, cause I got into a really like bad argument with my dad. Later on that, that evening, my mom and I got into it and me and my mom never argue. So I'm sitting in my room and I'm having this moment where it's just like, I felt so alone. And then I went and I tried to, cause you know, I, I've seen stuff, you know, and I, I didn't know what I was doing. I just went to try to cut myself. And as I went to try to do it, my mom comes in. She's just like, what are you doing? I would be going through it and I'm just like, yo God, like just kill me. Like please, like please, like almost begging to, to not be here. Almost like, I remember like just being like, yo, like, just please, like, I'm gonna drive, I'm going to work, but if you can just, let me get in an accident. Like, let, let something happen to me. Looking back, retrospect, I can, I know that there was like a presence there keeping me from doing that. My grandmother, my great-grandmother, my, my mother, like the strong women never talk about mental health, ever never showed weakness, never cried. So that was the image that I always had in my head and you always feel as if you need to live up to that. Going through life and literally carrying like backpacks of like weight, feeling like you can't talk about that. 
because you'll be stigmatized or you'll be looked down on in your peers. I know what I need to do so I can continue to be the best person that I can be. And if that means I gotta go to therapy, then I will go to therapy. If that means, means that, you know, I have to start taking meds again, I'll start taking meds again. You know, if it means I gotta wake up and meditate and read scripture and say 10 nice things about myself before I leave my house, that's what I'm gonna do, regardless of what anyone thinks, because you not me. Well, the person that I'm talking to, he gives a lot of, give me a lot of feedback. And he's able to give me suggestions on things that can help with my mental illness and problems I'm going through in general. I learned that just because you have a mental illness doesn't mean that you are less of a person. Doesn't mean that you're, you're less educated than someone else. And I feel like you just have to own up to it and live with your, your condition and be happy with who you are. And as long as you do that, you'll go a long way. A lot of times when people get clinically diagnosed, they have insurance. They're able to get the treatment, to go see the doctors. But what happens when you don't have that, you know? Case in point, I didn't have insurance. Last year, when I went through my last suicidal thought, I didn't have, like, my insurance, no one was accepting my insurance. So I called my spiritual coach, my Reiki master. She was giving me this guided meditation, this guided meditation. So you're envisioning all this stuff. And basically the whole premise of it was to enter into this new state of being, of peace. And it has impacted my life in such a way, a year later, that I'm just blown away. And I, I, I can't even imagine what life would be for me in the future. Me being diagnosed with depression has really made me a better mother because now I realize the way that I was raised, we didn't talk about mental health. We didn't talk about problems. We didn't talk about sadness. We didn't talk about day-to-day -day struggles. So when the way I raise my kids, I want to know how they're feeling. I can help my kids overcome this. Whereas when I was struggling, I really thought that I could do it on my own. And now I know that there's help out there. If you feel like somebody loves you in a, in a moment that, in a situation where you're, you feel like you're alone, I feel like it, it's gonna boost your morale, make you feel like you're, you're, you have a purpose. Being suicidal, you think that, you think so, lowly of yourself you you think you don't you're not even worth being here you're not you don't even you're, you're not worth the people that are in your life you're not worth the the good experiences that you do have you you feel like so small take those thoughts and spin them to no i'm worth being here no i am important i'm so important i'm not gonna let this moment define me i'm not gonna let someone define me i'm not gonna let um a circumstance, a negative circumstance. I'm not gonna let my mistakes define me because I'm, I'm a person and I deserve to be here. Life is hard, okay? And it's impossible to go through life on your own. You just can't. You need that support. You need people to go to. And I think the biggest thing is that we need to be vulnerable. We need to be able to be vulnerable and let our guards down and be like, listen, I, I got problems, okay? I need help. You know, can, can, can you be an ear, a shoulder, something? I, I want to be the best me that I could possibly be for myself, for my community, for my friends, for my children, my family, my husband. So it is so important to seek help. I'm so thankful that I made that phone call and asked for help. I'm a better person today and I hope that I could continue to help others that may need help as well. Cause right now it seems dark, but there's light in me. It's light up in the darkness. It's light up in the darkness. Psych nah. Psych nah. Psych nah. Psych nah. I am not my mental illness. I am not my mental illness. I am not my mental illness. Okay. And it begins with you. It starts with you. Yeah. 
It's starting to feel like the fall You probably pray that I fall And I just pray to the Lord And hope you shoot for the stars They haven't mastered the greatness Only mastered the hatred Your mouth only speak positive But your face couldn't fake it With the whole grain of salt 